Hi, I'm Father David. Join me today as we continue our journey to come to know this great friar and preacher, St. Anthony of Padua. Today, I'd like to look at the book, the baby, the bread, and the lily. These are the very strong images of St. Anthony of Padua. If you went to a church in Campo San Piero, Italy, there is a beautiful church there dedicated to St. Anthony. And in the center of the church, there is a huge basket of bread. And further up in the sanctuary, there is a beautiful statue of St. Anthony. And with that, he is surrounded by lilies. And then off to the side is the book of the Gospels opened up. And in the statue, you see Anthony with the baby, like we often see, like in this one right here. But these symbols are very, very important when we listen and hear about St. Anthony of Padua. First of all, in this beautiful statue here, we see the infant Jesus in the arms of St. Anthony. And the infant Jesus here is tenderly touching the cheek of St. Anthony. This is my favorite statue of the saint. I think it really shows the tenderness of Jesus Christ and also the gentleness of St. Anthony. What's missing in this statue, though, are some of the important symbols. In many statues, you will see the baby sitting on top of a book and down here on the bottom, sometimes you'll see lily or, or loaves of bread at the bottom. Why is the infant on the book? And what is the book? Well, the book is the book of the Gospels. And the infant Jesus essentially is coming from the book. It is the Word made flesh. God's Word becoming the flesh of God, which is the infant Jesus. So the book is really symbolic of the baby. The book and the baby are one. It is the Word made flesh, God's Word made flesh, that Anthony preaches. So the symbol of the baby in the book is what Anthony preaches, the Word made flesh among us. The lily that you often see with St. Anthony is a basic symbol of purity that is often seen among all of the saints and their images. The lily represents a sign of purity, a sign of devotion and giving one's whole life up to God completely. The bread, as we had mentioned before, is a symbol of St. Anthony bread for the poor. There are many stories about how people vow to St. Anthony or in their prayer to St. Anthony that they would bake bread or give money for bread to the poor if Anthony granted them a favor. And so in all of these stories, we see this great love of Anthony for the poor. And it's symbolized in this St. Anthony's bread for the poor. So many people make a donation to the friars in, name, in the name of St. Anthony bread for the poor is a sign that they want this money to go specifically to the poor. So when we look at the baby in the book, we see this is what Anthony preaches, the word made flesh, God's unconditional love for us. The lily, we see the purity of Anthony, his single-mindedness toward God, his whole life solely lived for God, and the bread, his desire to help the poor. These symbols are symbols not only of Anthony, but they're also symbols for us. Our lives, are also called to be lives of proclamation of the gospel, the word made flesh, to show people that God loves each and every one of us unconditionally. How do we do that? We do that by not being judgmental for people. We do that by accepting people for who they are. And we do that by loving all as sisters and brothers in all of creation. The lily, we need each of us, every one of us, to be able to see God in all the world around us and to live our lives for God. Also, in terms of bread for the poor, every one of us as Christians is called to care for our sisters and our brothers who have little if nothing. In that, St. Anthony's bread for the poor, that's the culmination of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we preach unconditional love that God has for us, then we also need to show that love for our sisters and our brothers. These symbols were important to St. Anthony and they are important to each and every single one of us who desire to live a Christian life.